All right, Todd Billing back on my reps, John. This time focusing on the final chapter, what I think may be the final chapter because both of these two guys are extremely talented juniors, and that will be Alabama cornerback Patrick Sertain versus the great Seth Williams. Seth Williams is kind of an unknown. Obviously, I don't cover Auburn on the channel here, so at least to my people, I don't know. Everybody's never really bringing up Seth Williams, but Seth Williams is as good as anybody, man. And with Rashad Bateman opting out of the college football season, I wonder if a guy like Seth Williams can pick up on some of the publicity that he may have gotten because they're very similar in their playing style. Seth Williams is just a monster. It's Every time he's in the game, I feel like he's going to catch anything thrown his way. He is that good. And Patrick Sertain, we all know, is extremely talented. These guys got one six foot two, two hundred and three pounds against a six three, two hundred and twenty four pound receiver. They match up well size wise, uh, talent wise. Patrick Sertain is up there with anyone. Man, it's a reps dissection for your ass. So not many reps in this last game, but you know how we do it. We'll break down the reps. I only think they took a, a couple of reps against each other, but we'll do the best we can on that. All right, let's get to it. What more can I say? Top billing. Top billing. All right, real quick, let's see what Seth Williams was working with uh, prior to Auburn here. 6'3", 212, a top 200 player, number 185 overall. Man, uh, 185 overall. Think about that, man. To me right now, he's good enough to go in the second round at the very least. He could be pushing for first round considerations, no doubt about that. Check his stats. So as a sophomore, he went 59 catches for 830 yards, eight tutties on him. Come on, man. Seth Williams working with the prodigy Bo Nix. I expect Bo Nix to be even better in his second year. Seth Williams will be a huge part of that. Let's see him at least replicate what he did last year or maybe hit over 1,000 yards. But either way with me, man, he is good. This kid is phenomenal, man. All right, let's get to these reps. All right, peep game. You got. Sertan right here manned up, even though this is a two-by-two, two, he's still manned up on Seth Williams, who is the the anchor in the stack here. So we'll just run it full speed right quick. Go invert on him. Gets him. I don't know what Seth Williams runs, but he just flat out beat Patrick Sertain right there. Not sure of Patrick Sertain's speed either. But I think Seth Williams is a cat that's a lot faster than he make time. His playing speed. Is nasty. It's almost like Terrell Owens. Like, like I think they said like he ran like a four or five or something like that when he was coming out. But he's clearly much faster than that in the NFL when he was playing. But check this out right here. He's working a cold approach. He technically he is off the line, so you, you probably gotta work the cold approach. But look, no hands on man at all. Tries to decrease the space, but it doesn't work. Now it's just a foot race. It's a foot race and a good outside shoulder throw. Just have this man beat. We'll just have him beat. And this is exactly what the prodigy Bo Nix does. This is a hell of a throw by Bo Nix. You can see right now, Sertain starting to panic. He They teach him in Alabama, I believe, to catch up and play the hand through the man or play the ball through the hands of the man. However, Seth Williams' hand is not even up right now, and he was starting to panic. But he did catch up and turn his head, but it was too late. So maybe if he had not a run like this and then try to – reach out with both hands and reach out and touch somebody. Maybe he could have kept his arms pumping and caught up, but you slow your momentum, man, when you're not pumping those arms like that. So he turns to locate and the pass is perfect. Safety is late with the help. Oh, uh, nasty. Straight nasty on him. Seth Williams getting busy. All right, back lined up in the boundary here. Now, this is an interesting rep. Another cold approach. Play on ball, then gets a flag. I don't know how to feel about this rep. So if we look at it right here, all right, let's go ahead and break down the nuances of certain here. Uh, base width, I like it. I like it. A little bit more narrow than we see from other guys there, but he opens up and then kind of expands his base width. So we see here not leaning too far over his skis. Working a cold approach, you can see the base width widen right there. Working a cold approach and then – he immediately gets on top of him. Now, look, now he starts to, all right, so I can I can see what's going on here. So 
you can't have your hands all over somebody like this, especially when the ball's in the air because you're impeding their progress. You can see him. He's Seth Williams is trying to get to the ball, so they're gonna always say that. They're like the the offense has a right to the ball, even though the defense has a right to the ball. But but the ball is in the air now. You would have to let him go, so he continues to ride that out. So that's what he was trying to work back to the ball. Or, so I can see how that's a, a penalty, right? Do I like it? The defender in me says I don't like that. I don't like it at all. I think it's, I think it's good football, like good chicken fighting right there. But I can definitely understand the letter of the law there that says you, you can't be holding on to somebody like that all the way down the field. So this is some of the stuff that we see from Patrick Sertain. Whether we like it or not, you got to go by the rules, man. So, I don't know. I kind of like the rep. I like the technicality of his game and everything like that. But you got to understand what you're up against there. So, you can't be doing that. So, it's, to me, that's another win for Seth Williams. Obviously, if it's a penalty, you still get the, the 15 yards or whatever. All right. Believe it or not, that was all the targeted reps between Williams and Sertain there. So, that's the thing about Sertain. He plays on the right side of the defensive formation, and most quarterbacks are right-handed, so they're going to naturally go to the right side of their offensive formation. I would like to see him flipped around to where Trayvon Diggs was and see him get a little bit more action. People think he's over there locking people up, when it's just the natural order of football. People are going to just naturally throw to their right because they're right-handed. All right, so... And think about it, a lot more to action. If you were to flush the pocket, the, your more natural motion is going to your right, running to your right and still throwing the ball. It's a more natural action than going to your left and trying to throw the ball. So hopefully they flip him around on the left. I don't think they will because Josh Joe played on the left as well. So he may just stay at right corner his entire career. But this is a non-targeted rep. But I just wanted to show you how Sertain looks when he gets hands on man. Hands on man, stay in position, ride his ass to the concession stand. Ride his ass to the concession stand. That's what you got to do right there. Make it to where they have no way that they can throw that ball. But look at them. Boom. Hands on, man. That's what you do right here. When you're shooting a jam, you're not trying to stop their progress. You're not going to stop a 225-pound person, 225 pound person from running just by putting your hands out there like that. Nor would you want to. <laughs> you can miss. You can do all kinds of stuff. What you want to do is shoot that hand and use it as a range finder, almost like boxing. You'll use it as a range finder just to put yourself into position the way you can get dick on, dick the hips, right? Pause. I was going to say pause with that. Dick the hips, pause. But there you go. You see him decreasing the space. There's nowhere for Williams to go. I would like to have seen him turn his head, though. Williams was looking. Why not turn your head? He stays on the inside of him like this, and then he starts to grab him at, towards the end. He's lucky this wasn't a targeted rep because then he could have probably been called, but – there's some things he needs to work on, but the raw materials are there. I think he's going to take a big step this year as far as certain. But as far as Seth Williams goes, he's already lit. People need to know about this kid, man. I love watching Seth Williams play. He is must-see TV. This matchup is must-see TV right here. Let me get you to a bonus rep that's not against certain, though. All right, Williams still to the boundary this time going against Trayvon Diggs. Back shoulder throw. The prodigy, uh, too easy. Look at, oh, oh no. Oh, no. Why did that happen to him? All right. Here we go. Diggs working the cold approach, too. What's up with this, man? What's up with all these cold approaches? Hands on, man. Where, why is there no more press in college football? This is something that we're going to have to talk about. Cats ain't pressing these days, man. Cold approach. You let a guy 225 pounds work with a cold approach. Then you have to start to try to panic. Now look at him. Diggs is running. He ain't even looking. He's just like scared to death, scared to look. He shook because ain't no such thing as halfway crooks. Now look at that. He keeps running. <laughs> he keeps running. He runs himself out the frame. Then boom, loses control of his nervous system or some shit. Look at him all on the ground for no reason. Why is his nervous system giving out on him on a back shoulder fade? Come on, man. Seth Williams making people lose control of their nervous system. Holla at your boy, man, the underground king. Like, comment, subscribe, tell a friend to tell a friend. Peace. What more can I say? Top billing. Top billing.